Hi everyone, Dr. Emmy from Pain Free and Fit. Today's lesson is on low back pain from deadlifts as well as deadlift low back pain recovery. We'll be discussing modifications in deadlift form for those of you with spondylolisthesis, degenerative discs, herniated discs, and retrolisthesis. By changing your grip and the way you do certain deadlift forms and techniques, you can definitely decrease the stresses on your lower back, helping you to get the gains you deserve without the injury. Hope you enjoy. So whether you've just herniated your disc, injured your lower back from deadlifting, or you have a chronic lower back problem due to degenerative disc disease, retrolisthesis, or spondylolisthesis, it's important to understand that modifying deadlifts and approaching deadlifts simply by taking generic advice like saying doing only rack pulls or hex bar deadlifts is going to be the answer for your lower back. You have to understand how mechanically the stress of the deadlift is affecting your lower back pain and how it relates to your unique situation. Now there are three basic directions of stress that can occur on the lower back with deadlifts that cause injury. The first mistake people make is losing their unique neutral spine position. There's a certain amount of curve or arch in the lower back that's right for you. That is what's called neutral or it's the ideal spot in your spine that's going to decrease the stress on either your disc, your facet joints, your ligaments. We have in other videos on determining what that neutral spine is, but as we talk about deadlifting form, we must make sure that when we set that neutral spine, if we have too much flexion, which is bending forward from the waist, that curve is going to be decreased. And that's a big mistake in novice deadlifters who go down and grab a bar. They lose that arch in the back and they slightly slump forward. The other mistake is when we have too much extension where that arch is increased, what's called a hyperlordosis. And many times that occurs if we're trying to pull, especially from our upper bodies and not pushing with our feet to begin the motion of the deadlift. If we try to raise the chest and pull with our hands off the floor, many times we're going to increase that arch and aggravate conditions, typically like spondylolisthesis, facet syndrome, where too much of an arch irritates the back. Many cases of disc herniation that also occurs. The other problem with deadlifts is a compression, a vertical compression on the spine. Because you're bringing the weight up from your hands, there's an inherent compression from above to below, and many times disc problems, cartilaginous problems in the facet joints, synovial membranes that are being entrapped in the facet joint become compressed and irritated. There are techniques that we'll discuss in this video that help to decrease that compression. And the third mechanical factor of force or direction of stress that can occur is shear, which is a front to back force. Depending on where my hands are and where the bar is in relation to my center of gravity, that's going to create a shearing force, which is a front to back force, many times aggravating instabilities like spondylo and retrolisthesis. Now, hand placement and bar placement in relation to your center of gravity is also a factor besides deadlift technique in terms of where you're pushing or pulling from and what muscle groups you're focusing on. The typical deadlift where the bar is on the floor and I'm grabbing as low as I can, that's going to produce a center of gravity change or moment arm between my hands and my hips that's a little different than when I come up and when the bar is at the top. The further I am towards the lockout of my deadlift, the more in line my hands are with my center of gravity. The lower I am, the more I have a flexion moment arm, meaning that the weight in my hands wants my chest to come forward. It wants me to lose that arch in my lower back. So rack pulls, the way I have set up here, where the bar is not quite as low and you can pull from just below your kneecaps, for instance, or a slightly higher rack pull where the bar is above your kneecaps is a way to modify your deadlifts while you're recovering from low back injury or if you have chronic problems to still do the deadlift but not aggravate your pain. If you have a flexion problem where you have a tendency to lean forward from the chest or that moment arm of your hands being more forward than your center of gravity is aggravating your back pain, you can also use a cambered bar where the bar is not straight but has a curve to it. With this setup, you can place your knees inside the cambered position and because your shins now are a little bit more forward on the bar because it's cambered, your hands are slightly behind their normal position. This also decreases that flexion moment arm. Now another option with deadlifting to decrease that moment arm 
is taking a grip that's slightly behind your knees. Using a hex bar or a trap bar allows you to do that as well as using dumbbells. But another option is using a lever apparatus, such as a lever bench or a lever squat or deadlift machine. Here, I can have alternate grips where my grips, depending on my foot placement and my hand placement on the lever, can change the way I do things. If I want to do a more traditional deadlift, I'm going to move my feet backwards and have that bar slightly in front of my kneecaps along the side of my shin. To decrease the flexion moment, I'm going to move my hips forward. Now my hand grip is actually behind my knees as I perform it. I can also become way forward with my stance so that my hand grip is actually behind me. And here as I'm deadlifting, if you notice, the weight now is more in line with the whole center of my body, my ear, my shoulder, my hip. This one is going to decrease the shearing forces. People with spondylolisthesis, retrolisthesis, problems where many times the low back is aggravated by a front to back force would probably do better with this form of deadlifting overall. Now one of the simplest methods to figure out where that moment arm should be for your unique back condition or what that grip should be in terms of in relation to your center of gravity is to do a simple test with a pair of light dumbbells, let's say 10 pound dumbbells in each hand. Do this when you first get to the gym before you're warmed up. You don't want to have your back warmed up because that's going to delete the sensitivity to this test. When we have motion across the back, when we have blood going in and spinal soft tissues start to loosen, we're not going to get a clear picture of how it's really affecting our back with a light weight. So do this one cold before the mechanoreceptive input of motion gets into your central nervous system and hides pain. Take the pair of dumbbells and with your eyes closed, just naturally bend down into a deadlift motion as if you're going to the bottom. At the bottom, move the weight slightly forward and slightly backwards. And at a certain point, you'll feel in your lower back, you feel the most comfortable. Typically, the more forward you go, you're going to feel a little more stress in the back. As you come backwards, it's going to decrease. As you go behind you, you may also feel a little stress in your lower back because that's, again, moving away from that center of gravity with your shoulders over the weight and see where your grip or what position feels the best. Once you do, that's going to be the position you want to figure out either with a cambered bar, a rack pull, or with a lever setup to have the proper hand placement to decrease the load on your back. You're simply using the feedback, your own biofeedback mechanism to understand where your grip should be that makes your back feel the best and to decrease your chance of irritating your unique back condition. Now another technique when recovering from low back injury with deadlifts or squats is to change your perspective on deadlifting and make it perhaps a little more functional. This I also use with a lot of my patients that are recovering from low back injury to get them back into normal daily tasks and that is using one arm deadlifts. If you use a pin with a handle attached to it, you can support the lower back by having the opposite hand on the knee. This is a great way to still keep some tension and some strength gains going on in your glutes, your posterior chain, and your quads as you deadlift and bring that bar up, but not put as much stress or compression on the back. Here I have two variables. Number one, I can change my stance to again reflect that moment arm of backwards or forwards grip depending on what I need, but also I can with my other hand decrease the compression of my back because I'm using my hand as a strut. Now my body on this side in particular has a position of resistance to that compression effect as I pull the weight up. I can also use power blocks to step on or a chain attached to the pin so I can get a higher or lower grip. If going too low is aggravating at the beginning, if I raise the weight up on a power block or I use a chain to elevate, I can do something that's similar to a rack pull where I'm using a quarter or half of range of motion where I still am getting a great workout on my quads, my glutes, my hamstrings, my erector spine, my lat muscles, but by supporting with that other hand, I'm decreasing the compression and I have the freedom of positioning that weight or my hand grip in relation to the moment arm, my center of gravity, to decrease the stress on my lower back. So plug these modifications into your deadlift workouts and let's see if it helps your lower back pain. 
If you're a competitive powerlifter or Olympic weightlifter, you'll want to use these tips as a recovery tool on your way back to conventional deadlift form. But if you're like most people who are simply looking to include deadlifts as part of their overall fitness routine, you're going to probably stick with which modification works best for you long run so it keeps your spine free of injury. If you've enjoyed this video on deadlifting and lower back pain, check out our channel. Subscribe to it. We've got a lot of great videos out there to help you. Questions or comments, write in. As always, I'll do my best to answer them. And remember, if you're looking for a great way to figure out what your unique biomechanics are, how to customize a routine around your injury, check out the many programs we have at painfreeandfit.com.